Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Well, this one says electricity tariff hike won't increase cost of production. And that is being said by the power minister. The minister of power, Adebayo Adelabu, says with at least 20 hours of daily power supply, manufacturers under Band A will spend less on energy, thus reducing the cost of production. Some weeks back, the federal government increased the tariff for Band A electricity consumers, those who enjoy at least 20 hours of electricity, prompting a clap back from Nigerians who argue that the move will increase hardship. But at the 8th African Energy Marketplace in Abuja on Thursday, Adilabu told the gathering that the hike in tariff will lead to a reduction in energy costs for manufacturers under Band A. Now joining us to have a conversation is Nick Agule. He's an energy expert. Good morning, Mr. Nick. Thank you for joining me. Good morning. Uh, good morning to our viewers globally. All right. So we're talking about electricity tariff, and we know how there's been an increase of about 300% because it went from about 60-something naira per kilowatt to over 200 naira per kilowatt. And um, even some people will argue that we're not seeing this electricity as much and why are we paying so much, right? But if we're looking at the crux of the matter, the electricity tariff hike won't increase cost of production, and that's been said by the power minister. I'm just wondering why this won't, you know, would not increase the cost of production. So I want to get your take on this story first. Thank you very much. And uh, thanks to Plus TV for putting this electricity matter on the spotlight always. Yeah. Uh, this is a uh, very good service that you are doing to the people of Nigeria. Thank you so much. Because for some reason, our leaders have taken their eyes off the ball of the fact, fact that without adequate electricity, all efforts to jumpstart the Nigerian economy will be in vain, as they have been in vain since our independence. I can't believe it that our leaders travel globally and the places they visit, they know that there are no generators there, they know that electricity is 24 seven and they come back to Nigeria and it doesn't strike them that Nigeria also should be on 24 seven electricity. It is something that I have not been able to wrap my head around it that our leaders go and see how other nations are being supplied with 24-7 electricity and the economies are thriving and then they come back to Nigeria and think that, oh, it is by hiking interest rates through uh, monetary policy, it is by taxing the, the citizens with one tax or the other, it is by chasing below the change operators up and down. Mm -hmm. It is by locking our borders so food export doesn't go that the economy will grow. No, the economy will not grow despite all those efforts because the economy does not have enough electricity. We have kept saying this thing, and if they are listening to us today or they will listen to us later, that electricity is like blood to a human body. Any human body that is starved of blood will not thrive, regardless of what the doctors do. If you like, go and import doctors or carry that body to a foreign hospital, so long as it does not have blood, it's not going to do well. And that is precisely what electricity is. The Nigerian economy will not do well with 3,000 megawatts. And this is where I fought the minister for power. If he watches this interview now, or his handlers watch it, and they get this interview to him, they should tell him that he is behaving as if he is working for the electricity companies. But as a minister, he should know that he is working for Nigerians. It is Nigerians that gave him a mandate. When we say he is a public servant, that servanthood means He's a servant of Nigerians who gave his boss, the president, the mandate for four years, and the president brought him on board. That's the minister for power. Why do I say that the minister is acting and behaving as if 
He is working for the electricity companies. Nigeria started with electricity company of Nigeria, ECN, which transmitted to NEPA, Nigerian Electricity uh, Power Authority, National Electricity Power Authority, NEPA. Mm. From NEPA, we went to PHCN, mm. Power Holding Company, CN, we now said we did privatization. From privatization, we now have 23 generating companies or more. We have one transmission company on Nigeria, and we have 11 distribution companies of Nigeria. Now, this is where the minister is getting it wrong. By the time these companies, these private companies came on board, Nigeria was on about 5,000 megawatts of electricity. 5,000 that PACN were giving us. These people who should be investors, these new companies, as they came on board, they were expected to bring in their money, their technology, their expertise, and their capacity to increase the power generation, transmission, and distribution output. And it is from the process of that investment that they would have now be making money to recoup what they put in. As we speak today, power supply is 3,000 megawatts. If it goes too high, it's 4,000. So this minister was working on behalf of Nigerians. If the electricity companies came to him and said, we want you to increase tariff because our costs are too much, he should have asked them, Please, what is your contribution to the Nigerian electricity sector? Since you came in, power was 5,000. Now it's 3,000. Where is the investment you were expected to put in? You didn't put in any investment, and you want me to now go and strangulate Nigerians by billing them only on 3,000 megawatts to give you money? You don't make money if you don't put money in. And he would just send them out of his office to say, go and put money in and increase power supply. If we increase power supply to like even 10,000 megawatts, you will start making more money. Because right now you are making money only on 3,000. If you are selling a product at uh, 225 and it's only 3,000 units, you will only make money for 3,000 units. Even at the same price, you increase the unit of that product to 10,000. You will make but that is, you will make three times more money than you are making now. That's what the minister should be telling the power companies. Because if the power companies say, oh, we invested now, we invested billions of dollars now, the minister should ask them, so where is the result of your investment? If you came in and the, uh, the supply was 5,000 megawatts, and you said you invested billions, and supply is 3,000, please, there is no investment here. Because I, as minister, working on behalf of Nigerians, can only see investment if I see your output rise. And so since you have not done any effective investment, you either go and invest or I will take the licenses from you. And I will give it to people who can invest and increase it. And the minister has a very good example to point the power companies to. And that example is telecoms. When MTN... Etisala et uh, Glow came on board. NITEL, the government company that was providing uh, telephones, were supplying 500,000 lines of telephone. Mark my words, 500,000. That is half a million. This MTN, Etisala, et and Co. brought in their money. They built base stations. They built, uh, they did uh, ammo cables, they did the uh, switching stations, they built all the marks you see all over Nigeria, often with the generator beside it, where investment that the telecoms company brought in. And you know what? Because they brought in the money and they expanded the capacity, they were able to increase output of telephone lines in Nigeria from the 500,000 to 212 million 
412 million lines, of which 163 million are on data. I am quoting the numbers by the Nigerian uh, Communication Commission directly. That is what you call investment. So now that they have increased the lines from 500,000 to 212 million, they are making their money back. But also, Nigerians now have enough telephones to use. We are not talking about band A, band B, band C with telephone supply. As we wake up today, the Minister of Communication has not addressed a press conference talking about why he should increase uh, telephone uh, tariff or why Nigerians cannot have telephone. It was the same thing that NITEL, in the days of NITEL, the Minister of Communication was very often addressing press conferences. And that is why, if you recall, one of the ministers in the bid to address a press conference made a statement that Nigerians interpreted to say telephone is not for the poor. That was what was happening in the United days. And if President Tinubu, and I address him directly now, if he wants to resolve the electricity matter so that his minister is not addressing press conferences, yet we are not seeing electricity, he should just go back and revisit the privatization that was done. And two key things he must do there. One, transmission company of Nigeria is in the hands of government who does not have money to fix it. He should privatize it so that private sector will bring their money and, and expand the capacity of transmission company of Nigeria to at least 25,000 megawatts in the next three years. And then he should go and look at these discos who have not invested money, but they want Nigerians to pay all their costs from only 3,000 megawatts and read the riot act to them. Is either they go and bring the money in and invest like the telecoms did to increase the capacity to at least 25,000 megawatts in the next three years, or they should go and sign a technical partnership with those who can bring in the money and do it, or you should simply take the licenses from them and then go and, uh, and give it to those, to global power sector operators who can bring in the money invest expand the capacity and give electricity in abundance to nigeria just like what the telecoms companies have done this is what president I, needs to do mm, i i totally you know share your sentiments because i mean nigeria is a country of over 200 million people and it's quite sad and unfortunate to actually hear that we're only generating about 3,000 to 4,000 megawatts. If you take our, you know, our, another African counterpart, which is South Africa, they have a population of just about 60 million people and they're generating over 70,000 megawatts. Imagine if you do the numbers, it, it makes no sense. Why Nigeria, who is supposed to be the giant of Africa, is just generating this meager amount for to, to, to sending to over 200 million people it, it's quite bonkers but you know for what the 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 power minister is saying it i want to even read what he said in court he said um it is true that if you are a band a um customer your bill would have doubled if not more but check out what you would have been spending on your generator servicing and diesel and petroleum proc procurement it would have been, it would be down considerably. So the argument of this new tariff having the capacity of increasing the cost of production and raising the, the prices of goods and services is not logical. So that is what you, you know, the, he's saying. He said manufacturers under Ban A should have a lower energy cost by now, thereby reducing their cost of production, except those that have not been paying for electricity in the past. Do you agree with this? Um, I know that it's just the same way fuel subsidy was being taken out. Obviously, the prices of goods and services were increased. And so if manufacturers feel like they need to pay so much, you know, for this electricity, they would also, it would also reflect in their cost of production as well. And who, who gets affected is the consumers. So don't you think in as much as fine, and they might not be servicing their generators or having to procure one in the first place, having to, you know, look for the petroleum products to actually run the generators the fact that you know the energy supply is so expensive isn't that going to definitely reflect in the cost of production uh, even before i answer your question the minister for power in nigeria he needs to be looking 
uh, at himself in the mirror. Anytime he dresses up for work, like this morning, he should stand before the mirror and look at himself and say, Chief Adelabo, as a minister for power, I'm going to the office now to go and preside over 3,000 megawatts of electricity for 200 million people. Am oh I God, really Nick. expected to go to work? That is, that, sorry? No, you're just cracking me up, that's all. <laughs> yes, ahead. yeah, I mean, he, he look, he look at himself in the mirror and say, Minister, I am a full cabinet minister. I'm going to work this morning. I have a permanent secretary. I have a set of directors. I have other companies I'm looking after, transmission company of Nigeria, rural electrification agency, uh, Nigeria Electricity Regulatory Commission. I have all these uh, Jenkos and uh, Discos and all of that. But all this is 3,000 megawatts. I'm going to go and sit in my office this morning and I'm going to be uh, presiding over 3,000 megawatts. If you look at self, himself in the mirror, ask himself. It's just mm -hmm. like you gave the very good example in South Africa. South yeah. Africa with uh, less than half the population of Nigeria, his counterpart there, you know what he's presiding over. Then he is, I think if it, if it makes that kind of self uh, introspection, mm. it will worry him. It will worry him to death to say, why? Why should I go and sit and be presiding over 3,000 megawatts? This is electricity that an industrial park yeah. we get. Am I a minister for an industrial park? I am a minister for, for, for the government of Nigeria of 200 mm. million people plus. Mm. So that's the first thing I will tell the minister of a power. That is what should be engaging him and not, and, and not a tariff. Yeah. You know? Now coming to the, to the question where he is saying, you know, this minister has a way of dropping this kind of words. You know, at a time he say, oh, we, we, uh, uh, electricity must be cheap in Nigeria. That's why Nigerians leave their lights on mm. and don't bother about switching it he off. He even threatened. He said, he said, you know, if we can't pay that tariff, then we'll probably be in darkness. He he said that. Exactly. And, and then he now went to the National Assembly and said, you must either pay this tariff or we are going to be in darkness. You mm. know, without telling the power sector operators, to put in money, you 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 got licenses. You were it was a five thousand when you came in. Now you are coming to me to say I should increase tariff at three thousand. Ah, where is the money you put in? That's why you should be telling the the power sector operators. Instead, he goes to national assembly and threatens the nation and says, look, if you don't increase the tariff so that from only three thousand megawatts we can find enough money to pay these power sector operators, we are going to be in darkness. So this minister is found of of putting loose words out like this. So this statement that he made, that uh, with uh, band A, mm. uh, manufacturers who are on band A, we spend less on energy. Let us interrogate the statement. First and foremost, number one, he's not going to have electricity to give 20 to 24 hours in Nigeria to all the manufacturers. Mm. It's impossible. If you look at the scale of numbers, that we're talking about like if we can talk about brazil brazil has a similar population like us 200 million plus they are on 180,000 megawatts 180,000 megawatts and uh, nigeria with a, with a similar population is on 3000 minister adelabu is not going to see 20 hours of electricity to give to the manufacturers in nigeria if he gives 20 hours to those who are in the Keja industrial area. That's all of the electricity that Nigeria will have. That is all of the 3,000 megawatts. Mm. So I don't want to call it a scam, but this uh, uh, band A thing that he's beating his chest and talking about is only going to increase the tariff for manufacturers, but they will never get that 20 to 24 hours electricity. So at the end of the day, their electricity cost for public power supply will rise without a commensurate rise in output, and they will be forced to go and use the same generators. Yeah. So they'll be using the generator in addition to pay higher tariffs mm. for public power supply. So the minister's postulation, and he speaks with that data, he just opens his mouth and says something without putting data on the table. 
he should have put data on the table by saying, okay, uh, Nigerian breweries, you are now, you are, you are, you, uh, Nigerian breweries have now shown data that they were spending X millions before the increase in tariff, and with the tariff now in band A, they are, the Nigerian breweries have now reported that they are spending less than that. This is how a minister should speak, meaning mm. he's speaking from data. From manufacturers who are now reporting lower cost of uh, uh, electricity uh, input, but the minister just sits at home, calculates a statement in his head, and goes to the office and opens his mouth and says it without any data backing it. This thing he has said it, are there manufacturers who have affirmed or confirmed that the electricity cost or energy cost have reduced because they are on band A. The second point that the minister fails to, to understand is that a manufacturer is not just picking cost from energy. A manufacturer also has suppliers. He has people who are supplying to them. And if those people are also experiencing higher energy costs, they will transfer those costs into the supply cost that they are making to a manufacturer. They will transfer it, you know. So if, um, uh, like I, I, I spoke about uh, Nigerian breweries, yeah, they have people who are supplying them their inputs, like uh, supplying them the wheat, supplying them the sugar, supplying them the the, the more the supply barley. them the, yes. the water. If those people are also experiencing higher cost from electricity, it will they will transfer there. those costs in. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, so this minister is, 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 I, 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 look, I am on national television. I don't want to use the words that are in my mind about this minister. But all I can advise this minister is that he should think carefully before he opens his mouth to talk. Hmm. He should think carefully. But what do you think, he what should, do you he think should we always... should, what, because we, we have just a few more minutes, what do you think um, the federal government should be looking at right now, especially knowing that, you know, we're not, we're not generating as much um, megawatts that we need, one, and then two, a lot of people are not, we don't even have the power to give all of these people. Also, in other climes, you're seeing people, um, other countries, they're sub subsidizing one thing or another, for their citizens and you know that like you've rightly said power in nigeria or power in any economy is just like blood to a human body so if you know that power is one thing that needs to be there for the industries to be able the manufacturing industries in this case to be able to grow and thrive and that would now have a ripple effect um you know positively in your economy why are we not looking at that if you were to advise the government on even what to do Let's not forget that the power grid collapses like every other month or every other year or something. So uh, there's also the argument that the greed, the, the, the infrastructure that we have is obsolete. Isn't that what the federal government is supposed to be looking at and looking for how to you know, ha develop the infrastructure of this whole power grid whereby you know that you need that for the electricity for Nigerians than having to increase the t electricity tariff for people that would probably still not see that the, the power. And even if you see it, just know that it's, there's always going to be a switch on and a switch off in minutes. What do you think, if you were to advise the, gov the government on what to do, what would you advise right now as we wrap it up here? It's very simple. President Tinibu, I, 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 I say that he's in poor position. That means he's in a good place to know exactly what to do. Why? Because he's perhaps Nigeria's first private sector operator to become president. Secondly, he is an energy expert. That was his field. That's where he worked. You know, and uh, thirdly, uh, whilst he was in Lagos as governor, he embarked on an ambitious electricity project to bring turbines into the Atlantic Ocean, power them with gas, and, and, and generate electricity for, for Lagos State, a, a, a project that was cut to by the then president, uh, President uh, uh, Obasanjo, citing the fact that uh, electricity was on the uh, exclusive list of the constitution. So now, this same person who has all these uh, qualities and capacity, becoming Nigeria's president, he should just sit back and conduct a one-day electricity summit in the villa 
by bringing all the stakeholders in the electricity sector in one place and ask one question, one question. Why is Qatar, where I recently went to, 2.8 million people enjoying 12,000 megawatts? Hmm. And Nigeria, 200 million people, that is almost 100 times the population of uh, Qatar, hmm. enjoying only 3,000. I want to know. And that is when he will hear all the problems that are pinning Nigeria down to 3,000 megawatts. And that is when he will put presidential directive immediately to unlock those problems and send Nigeria to at least 30,000 megawatts before his first tenure ends. And uh, like I said, there are two key bottlenecks he must deal with. Transmission company of Nigeria is a mm. bottleneck because the Jenkos cannot generate what transmission cannot carry. So the Jenkos are pinned down. Some of the system collapses that you have mentioned are because the Jenkos are trying to push too much power into transmission. Mm. It just collapses. Yeah. And distribution cannot supply what transmission does not give them. The government is still holding on to transmission. President Tinibu should ask the question, why? And then he should take steps to allow private sector funding come into transmission to expand that capacity. If transmission capacity is expanded, then Nigeria's installed capacity as we have today with the infrastructure infrastructure already on the ground is 14,000 megawatts. At least we can start generating and supplying that 14,000 megawatts for which we have installed capacity. If transmission is that way. Mm -hmm. And then the discourse, the discourse are just politicians that got the licenses, briefcase carrying businesses. They have not put in any money because Nigerians can tell that between the PHCN and the discourse we have today, there has been no difference. Mm. So you can see that uh, the PSCN were not giving Nigeria meters, the discourse are not giving meters. Under PSCN, if your transformer was bad, you needed to replace your transformer, the, the discourse are not giving transformers. You can see that they didn't bring in any money. Because I can give you a difference in uh, in United. I was working in Lagos. We had an office. If our telephone got spoiled, the United boys will tell us that the junction box that is supplying telephone to our area is bad. We contributed money to fix that junction box. Is MTN taking money from Nigerians to go and fix a base station? Answer is no. Mm -hmm. See what private sector does. Right, so you can see that the way these politicians are behaving with discourse. It is nothing different from the way PSCN was behaving. And that mm -hmm. is because it was politicians running PSCN. His politicians still running the discourse now. Tinibu, President Tinibu needs to dislodge them. Mm. I can tell you that if CMS, if CMS AG, the German company is the one that has Ikeja distribution company today, Nigerians will no longer buy transformers. All Nigerians right. will no longer uh, uh, have estimated billings. All CMS right, will right. bring in money. We expand the network, bring in meters, bring in transformers. Mm. You will start seeing changes. There's just in a that lot. Disco. There's a lot and that they need to look into. The power they need. Yeah, I, I think there's just a lot that they need to look into, and they still need to understand the plight of Nigerians when it comes to you know their income. So having to you know increase the tariff so high, um, in a way, it seems a bit tone deaf, but. We just hope that the government, they will keep, you know, doing things to benefit us. They'll keep putting regulations and reforms in place that would, you know, benefit Nigerians. But this is where we have to draw the court in here in this segment. We want to say thank you for coming. It was lovely having a conversation with you as always. Thank you so much, Nick. Thank you very much. And uh, let's, let's have a nice day. And I mean, we're making the point about uh, subsidy. In yeah. the UK, government is subsidizing education and healthcare. Mm -hmm. Imagine. Yeah. So Nigeria we need to be, be doing something. We need to be doing something. All right. Thank you so much. Thank yeah. you. Okay, we'll be speaking with Nick Agule, an energy expert, and we've just been talking about the statement by the Minister of Power saying that the electricity tariff hike will not increase cost of production. Well, we'll just see how that goes. We'll go on a short break, and when we return, we'll be looking at our second hot topics. Well, this one talks about, you know, courts ruling out the fact that the CBN needs to look at your social media handles. Please stay with us.